Hello, I'm back to yet another week of Math 236 Home Edition. There aren't new, too many more weeks left, right guys? So it's going to be a crazy uh, two weeks here with lots of great information and exciting results to pack in. So let's get started. Today is our last um, lecture on 11.6. Um, some useful results that were kind of related to our root test work last time that you might want to kind of have in your back pocket was this limit, the limit as n goes to infinity of some number fixed, right? That's positive, um, to the one over n, the nth root. That limit is one. That one was relatively easy to do, right? This one, when this guy is not fixed, but also growing unbounded, we showed limit as n goes to infinity of n to the one over n was also one, right? This one we used very different methods than that, yeah? All right, those two are very nice, important results to have um, with you and understand where they came from whenever you're using the root test when you're taking nth roots of things, right? And then taking limits as n goes to infinity. Um, it's also kind of useful to sort of, you know, have a handle on these guys. And these guys come up as well quite a bit um, so let's see if you could re reason through this one. The limit of n goes to infinity of n squared to the 1 over n. Do you have a thought? Do you have a thought? What do you think? Okay, anybody? Maybe? Hmm, let's see. Would, it, would that be equivalent to the limit of n goes to infinity of n to the 1 over n quantity squared maybe, right? Rules of exponents? Yeah. And when in this squared power, so taking the limit of this thing squared, isn't it true that the limit of a thing squared is the limit of the thing squared? As long as we have that limit existing, yes? Right? True? Right? Limit, that's our power rule for limits, power law for limits, and therefore, what do we get out of this limit? Woohoo! Also one. Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Right? So what do you think about this one? What if it's a P instead of a 2? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What if it's a P instead of a 2? P is some number, some real number. Yeah? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Now, um, how about this last one? Yeah, not quite the same. Okay? Not quite the same. Um, so maybe you want to see if you can maybe take a guess at what you think this limit is, but then also um, see if you can show it. How would you need to show this limit? This guy is what type of indeterminate form? Yeah, natural law goes, grows unbounded, whenever n's going to zero, that's an infinity to zero indeterminate form, right? I'll let you go through those calculations and convince yourself what that question mark ought to be. All right, so those things are useful when you're applying the root test as well, because that makes things a lot simpler in some cases. So. There are a variety of things that are good to keep in mind. Now we're going to go back to the ratio test. We're going to pick up another problem, another one of your homework problems. It's going to be a bunch of homework problems today. Um, so let's see here. Let's look at, um, let's look at, a homework problem. This, Homework problem. Hopefully you've already kind of thought about this a little bit. Um, it's a really important problem. There's a lot buried in here and not even all of it will we kind of unpack today. But um, let's look at 11.6, number 45. Okay, so 11.6, number 45 says to show, right, what? show what? That the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial um, converges. Okay, this is what we're going to show. All right, now remember I was promising you, right, our, our series are going to start having variables in them instead of numbers, right? Um, in the last problem that we did for homework, uh, or for, uh, which was a homework problem, 
That was an example in the last time. We looked at uh, the sum of n factorial over 100 to the n, right? Okay, so this is kind of the reverse of that with um, where x would have been 100 in the other one. Now it just stands for any real number x, okay? Any real number x, right? And that doesn't say x positive, right? It says all x, right? So x could be negative as well. All right, so this is a little preview of where we're heading, okay? Alrighty, so you see a factorial. What does factorial tell you? I better use the ratio test. That's really my only hope, right? Okay, so that's what we're going to go with, the ratio test. Okay, what does the ratio test tell us? Okay, well that says look at the limit as n goes to infinity, oh, and this is part A of this problem too. There's another really important part, which is part B. We're going to focus on this right now. Um, the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the next term divided by the previous term, right? Ratio. That's our a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. But now, um, what do we have, right? So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of what? Okay, so... We've got the absolute value of, let's just do this down here actually. Well, no, we'll just go ahead and put it here. Okay, sorry. Um, so what do we have? Uh, what is a sub, n, a sub n plus 1, right? It is x to the n plus 1, yeah, divided by n plus 1 factorial, right? And I'll just keep it all one big thing to start with. That's my a sub n plus 1, right? Put an n plus 1 everywhere you saw it in. Got to have parentheses there, okay? I see some of you squeezing them in right now. Got to have it. Without them, it's wrong. All right, a sub n is what? x to the n divided by n factorial, yes? Okay, now what do we do with this? We got to um, simplify this fraction. Now I'm going to erase all of this because you've got this all nicely written down. In your notes that you're taking. Okay, so what is this limit? What do I do? I want to get this written as a single fraction, right? We're getting so good at this right now. Do not drop your absolute values. Um, what do we have, right? We'll have an x to the n plus 1 in the numerator and an n plus 1 factorial in the denominator, right? And then what? That's this piece right there, yeah? And then this x to the n is going to be down here, right, in the denominator of the single fraction, and the n factorial is going to flip up to the top, right? Okay? Fraction math. All right. So now what do we do? Now we demonstrate that we understand how these things work. And we write out explicitly so that we can see what explicitly cancels. We don't start slashing various things in here. That's not going to get you credit, right? So we need to rewrite x to the n plus 1 how? Good. x to the n times x, times x to the 1. That's what x to the n plus 1 is, right? And then our numerator is times n factorial. We know that it's going to be fine to leave that guy as it is because... How are we going to rewrite n plus 1 factorial? How do we want to write that? Good. n plus 1 times n factorial. Very nice, right? That's what that means. Then I have my other x to the n here, and now I'm golden, right? Now I have something written that is very clear what it is I'm canceling. This x to the n cancels this x to the n. This n factorial cancels this n factorial, right? So I continue my limit statement. I bring my limit along. We haven't done any limiting yet. We just keep writing it there because without it, it's wrong, right? Um, and so what are we taking the limit of now? I'm going to do this slowly just to make sure we see what's happening. x divided by n plus 1. That's all that's left, right? x in the numerator, n plus 1 in the denominator. We good? Awesome. Okay, so well, what do we know? Well, let's just do some more absolute value fraction math. The limit of an a the absolute value of a fraction is the fraction of the absolute values, right? So I can say that this is the limit as n goes to infinity okay, 
the absolute value of the numerator is the absolute value of x. Remember, x could have been negative, right? So you can't just say x. That's totally wrong, okay? Um, the absolute value of the denominator, now what do we know about n, right? n is greater than or equal to 0, right? And since n is greater than or equal to 0, n plus 1 is always positive. So I can drop the absolute value there. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. So now what do I have? I've got this limit. What is the value of this limit, you say? Okay, gave you a minute there. What can you tell me about x? x is some, I don't like this green marker. Um, let's try this one. Yeah, that one doesn't work real well either. Um, x is some, right, fixed real number. Can you even see that? Yikes, fixed real number, that's what I wrote. Um, x is a fixed real number. n is what is varying, right? Our limit is an n. You see an n up here in the x? No. So x is constant as far as n is concerned. So what do I have? I've got a constant divided by something that's growing huge. And if n is going to infinity, n plus 1 is growing unbounded as well, right? So I've got a constant divided by something Growing unbounded, what is that result? Good. Zero. That limit is zero. Fantastic. Now, why were we doing this? <gasps> yeah, it was the ratio test, right? You told yourself that. That's why you didn't forget, right? Oh, I was doing the ratio test. Now, what do I need to do? What is important to just, what do I want to say once I've done the ratio test? I need to say, oh, well, what result was I looking for? Okay, this is my guy. This is my L. L needs to be less than one, right? Whoops, less than 1, not less than L. Careful. <laughs> less than 1, right? So this guy is my L. L is 0. Z 0 is less than 1. Therefore, what does the ratio test tell me? This series does what? Converges how? Good. Absolutely, right? We look at the limit of the absolute value. Right? An absolute Convergence implies convergence, right? From our work the other day. So therefore we have absolute convergence for this series. It converges for all x. Woohoo! We're super excited about that. Doesn't matter whether x is positive, doesn't matter whether x is negative. Now we've got infinitely many different um, series, right? We could put in a different x, right? And we've got infinitely many series that we know converge. That's kind of nice to just do it all in one fell swoop, right? Instead of doing it like once for 100 and once for negative 3 and once for 5, right? Is that, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's where we're heading. All right, so that's pretty awesome. There's so many awesome things about this series, but I just don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So now let's think about what else. Um, so this proves, using the ratio test, that this guy converges for all x. Now let's see what part B says, okay? Um, um, So before we do part B, let's recall something, okay? So number 45, part B. I'm going to erase this now, okay? Um, recall what did the divergence test say right it seems like this is coming out of the blue right but you need to know this right so what does the divergence test say divergence test that was a while ago right way 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 long time ago at least it seems right what does the divergence test say it says if the limit and then goes to infinity of the nth term of a series is not zero, then what do I know? The series, right? The series does what? Yeah, it's a divergence test, right? That's all you can conclude, divergence, right? Then the series diverges, yeah? If this limit is zero, do I know anything? Nope. If the limit were z is zero, could series could diverge, could could converge, right? But if this limit of the nth term of something we're summing 
is not zero, then we're guaranteed the series diverges, right? That was our very first test, the divergence test. We got that from the proving the contrapositive of it. This time we're gonna recall the divergence test because that's the thing that we're most familiar with to help us remember what the contrapositive really was, right? Now remember, what did we know? We, we talked about back in that lecture, the contrapositive of a statement and a statement are equivalent to each other, right? So if this guy's true, then the contrapositive is true. So what did contrapositive mean? What do I do? Swap the things that are after the if and the then and negate them, right? Yeah, swap and negate, right? Okay, that's the only way it stays true. All right, so what's gonna come after this F, this if, okay? What's gonna come after this if um, is ne the negation of this piece, right? What came after the then? So if a series diverges, what does not Diverging mean? Good, converging. So, if series converges, then, what comes after the then for the contrapositive of this statement? The negation of this, right? So, if the limit as n goes to infinity of an is not, not zero, then the limit is zero. So, this is an entirely different thing. If a, a different way of thinking about this, but equivalent. If a series converges, then the limit of, the, if, of its nth term had to be zero, right? Okay? Um, the converse of this, swapping, the if, swapping what comes after the if and the end, is totally false. Some of you got tripped up on that with the true-false questions, okay? Um, on test two. If we swap these two guys, that's totally false, okay? Um, but if we do know a series converges, then we're basically given a limit for free. Wait, what? Wait, what? What did we just say? If we know a series converges, then we're basically given a certain limit for free, right? Now we're kind of swapping things all around, right? We found out that this guy converged. Therefore, what do we know? So by... The contrapositive of the divergence theorem, or the divergence test. Sorry, call it the divergence test. Divergence theorem, something else, count three, four. Anyway, um, so by the contrapositive of the divergence test, um, what do we know? We then know what for this problem that the limit as n goes to infinity of what? x to the n over n factorial is what? Has to be zero because we know that series converges. That limit is zero. And that's a huge deal. That's what part b said actually to do. Just double check and make sure. But, um, that's what part B wanted you to do, was deduce this limit, right? That this is true for all x, right? Any real number, right? Okay? So that's kind of awesome, and it comes just from knowing this guy converges and applying this. Now, why is that awesome? Well, this tells us a lot of things, okay? This tells us an awful lot of things. So one thing, right? So this guy is a factorial, right? Yeah? What is this guy? Where's the variable and who's fixed? Is it a power function or an exponential function? Where's the variable? Who's fixed? Right? X is fixed, N is moving, right? That makes this a good exponential function. Right? So I've got an exponential on top and a factorial on the bottom. And what is this limit telling me? Both grow unbounded. So think about x being positive. Both grow unbounded off to infinity, right? Both go off to infinity um, as n goes to infinity. And factorial grows unbounded. Um, but the limit of this one over this one is zero. What does that mean, right? If I have an infinity over infinity indeterminate form, right? If the result goes off to infinity, 
then the top guy won, because that's what the top guy wants to do. He wants to make things grow unbounded, right? Okay. If the, what does the bottom infinity want to do? In infinity in a denominator, just like we saw there, you know, a constant over something growing huge wants to go to zero, right? So infinity in a denominator, if that guy wins, right? Remember, these are just all, you know, these are all the battles of good and eater. We never know who's going to win the battle until you do the calculation, right? So here, right, the bottom infinity won, and the result went to zero, just like this guy would do to any constant, right? Okay, yeah, constant over infinity is equal to zero, yeah? Okay, so anyway, what does that tell us? That tells us that this factorial grows faster than this exponential, okay? And so let's write that down. So n factorial grows faster than x to the n um, as n goes to infinity. That's actually kind of important to keep in mind as we just start processing a bunch of different things, trying to have some knowledge of what might happen in, um, as, we, as things get more complicated. So, like in mathematics, anything we do, that took a lot of work to write down, right? Here's the math. Here's how we say it in words, really, right? And factorial grows faster as x to, uh, than x to the end, and then goes to infinity, right? Because that limit is zero. So, what do we do? We introduce more notation, and we say, okay, well, if I'm going to compare x to the n and n factorial, or n large, right? Um, or n large right? That means kind of as n grows unbounded and positive, then not a, n factorial is going to end up being much bigger than x to the n, such that it dominates x to the n. So factorials dominate exponentials. That's what this is saying. Factorials dominate exponentials. That's kind of cool. That's very cool. Yeah? Okay, um, and in fact, right, um, exponentials dominate power functions. So what would be a power function, right? A power function would be like n to the p, right? Because n is changing and p, the power, is constant, right? And so exponentials dominate power functions, yeah, okay? Um, and in fact, power functions are going to dominate, so here p is positive, um, power functions are going to dominate natural log. Okay? Um, so let's see, for example, um, these ideas, this bottom piece, is actually back in section 4.4. There's a couple of homework assignments, homework exercises I might throw up as well for you to think about that. Um, so, for example, let's think about this one, right? Um, let's just think about it with natural log of n and n, right? So, who wins? Let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n over n, right? This is n infinity over infinity in determinate form, right? Okay, so let's do L'Hopital's rule. What do we get? We get the limit as n goes to infinity, derivative, again, they should be x's, but we'll just pretend for this moment that n is a continuous variable in this calculation. Um, natural log of n, derivative, one over n. What we got there, we did the calculation last time. What are we left with? limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, which is 0, right? So what did we just say? The limit as n goes to infinity, natural log of n over n, is 0. What does that mean from up here? n dominates natural log of n. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. So natural, we've been talking about, you've had several problems where you were exploring just how slowly natural log of n grows as n goes to infinity. Okay? And then this is another way of talking about that. We call this dominance, right? Factorials dominate exponentials. Exponentials dominate power functions. Power functions dominate um, natural log. Okay, so what?
what else, right? Okay, there's so much more, so much more. Um, having these things in mind kind of help us think about a variety of things as we move forward with um, the rest of our semester too. So let's look at another homework problem. Let's look at another homework problem. This one is 11.6, number 18. Okay? And 11.6, number 18 says this. All right. Oh, so, oh. actually, so before I go on, right? So, okay, yes, we have it written down. So this was... 11.6 number 45, right? That was this guy, the sum n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, right? That's that guy. So I'm gonna change some things for what number 18 is. Let's just write this guy out for a sec because we're gonna see him again. I want you to remember him. Okay, so x to the zero power when n is zero is one. What is zero factorial? Also one, right? One, right? Okay, one over one. And then plus, um, when n is one, x to the one power over one factorial, which is one, right? Um, plus x squared over two factorial, which is just two, plus x cubed over three factorial, right? Which is six, right? Plus x to the fourth over four factorial, that guy, okay? We'll see this friend again. Okay? Just be aware. Yeah? We'll see this friend again. All right. But now, what are we doing in number 18? In number 18, all we're doing now is changing... Um, we're going to start counting at 1, not that big of a deal, um, and we're going to change the x to an n, n to the n, over n factorial. Okay. Is this a whole new animal now? Well, let's look at this guy. Is this guy now an, an exponential function? No. Why not? Right? The base isn't constant. And it's changing, right? Is this guy a power function? No, why not? Power's not constant and it's changing, right? So this is a whole new type of thing. Where does it belong in this, you know, dominance ex experiment? All right, we're gonna erase all of this and we'll see what happens. Try to just keep this here so that we can. I don't know whether I'll be able to. It might take up too much space. All right, this is one of your homework problems. Uh, converge or diverge. Okay. Well, actually, hold on. Sorry, we're flopping these two guys. Um, so we're. This is the actual, actually number nine, number 18, okay? So we have it swapped. Okay, so the question becomes, well, does it, is it does this converge or diverge? It's a factorial, right? At the end of the end, okay, well, maybe we would like do the root test, see in that guy, but with factorial, we're kind of like stuck with re ratio test, right? Okay, so let's look at ratio test. What does ratio test say? Uh, this is the limit, and then goes to infinity, the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, right? It will never kill you to write that down so that you don't forget. All right, now what's nice about all this, n is all bigger than or equal to 1, the n's are positive, everything's positive, so the absolute value isn't going to cause me any issues here at all, right? So that I can, when I start writing things down, ignore the absolute value because everything's positive. All right, so what is a sub n plus 1? Um, and we're going to do this now. We're getting better, so we're going to do this in two steps in one now. 
I'm going to put an n plus 1 everywhere I see an n, right? So my a sub n plus 1 is n plus 1 factorial divided by n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1, right? That is a sub n plus 1. Then I'm going to divide by a sub n. So if I divide by a sub n, right, then that means that n factorial is going to be down here, and that n to the n is going to be up here, right? If we skip the fraction over fraction piece. So now we need to work on this limit. So now it's just fraction and exponent math, right? So let's see. Um, What's our favorite way to rewrite n plus 1 factorial? Woohoo, we're good at this now. n plus 1 times n, right? And then we've got this times n to the n right there. Okay? All divided by. You have to make your writing clear, right? So n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1. Okay, well, what can we do? Let's first just use the rules of exponents. So what do we have? n plus 1 raised to the n, right, times n plus 1 raised to the 1, right? 1. Yeah? That's, that's that piece right here. Times n factorial. Oh, whoops, I forgot to write n factorial. You guys are probably all out there screaming, hey, on top you need n factorial, right? n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial, right? So if you have everything nicely written out, you easily see when you make some mistake when you go to cancel. Yeah? All right. Let me double check we're still recording. Um, yes? So, now we're at a place where we can cancel some things. What can we cancel? n factorial, n factorial. n plus 1, n plus 1. Nothing else. You couldn't have been canceled in here. It wouldn't have made any sense, right? Okay, this here. Now, what, what do we have left? You can't be like saying all oh, ends cancel in the ends. I'm left with one over in, one to the end of the denominator. That's insanity, right? What am I left with? I've got the limit as n goes to infinity. What do I have in the numerator? n to the n divided by n plus one to the n. Yeah, that's what I've got. n to the n divided by n plus one to the n. Oh, again, that's infinity over infinity, but right now it's not helping me the way it is. Um, that would be super ugly to try to deal with at this stage, so we got to make it, we got to be smarter with how we work from here on out. And this little trick type of thing, not a really, not really a trick, but um, it's something to be aware of because these limits come up a lot. So, let's just do some fraction math, right? With exponents, right? How could I rewrite this? in some simpler way, possibly. Maybe only one exponent, right? They have the same exponent, and so it could be n divided by n plus one all raised to the n. Yes? Are we good? Make sense? Yes? All right. Still, it's a little bit ugly. This is still, so now let's think about this guy, right? If we think about this limit, right? Um, this limit as, so this was infinity over infinity in determinate form, right? Here, if I look at this guy, what does n over n plus 1 go to? You should be getting pretty good at this now. It goes to 1. Good. So this is a heads to 1 to the infinity. That is also one of our indeterminate forms, right? So it's still an indeterminate form, right? Okay. Here it would have been that. Now it's that. Okay. This is not equal to 1. You cannot say that's 1. Okay. So what do we want to do? Well, there's a lot of things you could do. But what I'm going to do right now is just do kind of a little bit of a trick that helps us just a little bit more easily get at this guy, okay? So, we're going to take this limit, we're going to come up here, and we're going to rewrite this limit as n goes to infinity. So I've got n over n plus 1 to the n, right? I'm not going to do anything to the exponent. And boy, I, if, they, if those guys were swapped, right, if it was n plus 1 over n, then I could just like divide each piece and it would simplify, yeah? So I kind of want that to happen, but you can't just flop stuff. And you gotta be a little bit careful if you try thinking about inverting things. So really what I would like is I would like this expression to be on top also so that I could just divide it out. So if I want that to be on top, okay, I have an n plus one on the bottom. If I want there to be an n plus one on top, 
and I only have an n, I can add a 1, but what do I also have to do? Good. We're good at this now. Subtract a 1. Add 0. Mathematician favorite trick, right? Let's add 0. Well, why did we do that? Okay, well, because I can now write this as the limit as n goes to infinity of, let's break it up and see, n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, right? Treat this piece first, and then subtract 1 over n plus 1. Undo the common denominator, right? Yeah? That minus that. Well, that's kind of awesome, because what's n plus 1 divided by n plus 1? Yeah, hey! 1. We like 1, right? So now I've got 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 to the n. Yeah? Okay. You may already recognize this limit, or this is essentially a limit we've dealt with a while ago. It's been a while, though, so maybe we'll go through what the calculation would be in order to determine this limit. Yeah? Okay. So, again, remember, 1 over n plus 1, that's going to 0, so this is still a 1 to the infinity indeterminate form. Yes? So what do we need to do, right? Um, I'm not sure what this value of that limit is, but I'm going to come back over here now and try to compute it using our methods for exponent and determinant forms, right? I promised you a long time ago those weren't going to go away. Okay, so what do we do? Um, so to evaluate this limit, we take the natural log of the limit, right? The natural log of the limit equal to the limit of the natural log, right, because we can swap those two guys. We've talked about that a number of times. The limit of the natural log, the limit, swap the limit of the natural log, 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 to the n. Yeah? Okay. Um, why do we love that? Because now we can bring this n down. Yeah? Does that make sense? Because it's the natural log of a to the b. Oh, and by the way, from the very beginning, when we had those um, nice root test things, and I said, why don't you try the natural log of n raised to the n? That's different. Natural log of n is in a parentheses. It's that to the nth power. That is different than natural log of n to the n, where you'd be able to bring the n down. Right? Okay? So, make sure you're paying attention to that. But this guy is natural log of thing to the n, not natural log of thing all to the n. Okay, here we go. Limit, as n goes to infinity, bring that n down, n times the natural log of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Yeah? Okay, what do we do? Now this would be um, an infinity times 0 indeterminate form, right? Because that's 1 to infinity. This is 1 to natural log of 1, which is 0. Still can't do anything, so what do you have to do? Um, We've got to create a fraction. We have to throw one of these guys to the denominator as a reciprocal. We don't want it to be natural log. That gets messy, right? So it's going to be n. The limit as n goes to infinity of our natural log guy stays on top. 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And what goes in the denominator? Good. 1 over n, right? In order for those to be algebraically equivalent, right? 1 over n would actually be. All right. Okay, now we have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, right? Natural log of 1, as n is going to infinity, that's 1 to 0, divided by 1 over something getting huge, 0 over 0. So we got, we were set up for, natural, for uh, L'Hopital's rule now with our now assumption that we'll pretend that n is a, a continuous variable instead of discrete, so we can take derivatives, yeah? And since we are going to take derivatives, I'm going to rewrite this. Um, now, I'm not going to do L'Hopital's rule yet, but I am going to rewrite it in a way that's more conducive to taking derivatives correctly. So I got natural log of 1 minus the quantity n plus 1 to the negative 1. Yeah, that's what 1 over n plus 1 is. Otherwise, i got to use quotient rule there, okay, when I'm doing the chain rule. Yeah, all divided by what? n to the negative 1. So now let's take derivatives, yeah? How do we indicate we're doing that? Give me something. L'Hopital, here we go, limit as n goes to infinity, 
Oh, now I'm going to erase this just so I have space. Okay. So what are we going to have? Um, we're going to be doing derivative of top divided by derivative of bottom, right? Let's do the bottom first. It's easier, right? What's derivative of n to the minus one? Minus n to the minus two. Very nice with respect to n. Good. What is the derivative of natural log of stuff? One over the stuff, right? So one over one minus n plus one to the negative one. Yeah. One over the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. What's the derivative of my stuff? Right? I've got a negative here, like derivative of one is zero. Then I got a negative. Um, so times negative one, we'll call that, right? And then times what? Um, now I'm gonna have to use the chain rule, stuff to the negative one, so what do I do? Times negative one times n plus one to the negative two times what? The derivative of what's inside, what's the derivative of n plus one? Good, one. Whew. Okay? Now we gotta be able to actually like simplify this fraction before we try to figure out what that limit is. Yeah? A negative times negative is a positive. We're super happy about that, right? Um, times one, life is good. So what do we have here? We've got this is the limit. Not taking any limits now. We're just still trying to simplify algebraically. Um, so what do we have? We have in the numerator, right? One over one minus one over n plus one, right? That's what that is. Um, times this guy, which is, those guys are gonna be a positive one, one over n plus one quantity squared. Yeah? That's my numerator. What's in the denominator? Minus one over n squared. Yeah? Okay? So now I'm gonna save myself some writing and um, say, okay, well, what are we gonna do here? I want to bring this guy to the top. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by n squared over n squared, right? That's going to give me an n squared up here. And that minus, I'm just going to stick out here, right? Okay, now what am I going to do? Oops. Now what I'm going to do, excuse me, is say, all right, what about this n squared over n plus 1 squared? I'm going to rewrite that as n over n plus 1 quantity squared. Yeah? And now I've got that limit, right? And if I have n over n plus 1 quantity squared, what do I do with that guy to try to evaluate that limit? What I do is divide each guy in here by n. So what is that going to now become? That's going to become 1 n over n over 1, which is n over n, plus 1 over n. Yeah, you should be pretty good at this by now. Alrighty, so what do we have? Now we've got a limit we can evaluate. Yeah? Let me get a different color. What do we got? Where is 1 over n going? And n goes to infinity? 0. So 1 plus 0 is going to 1. 1 over 1 is 1. Where is this whole thing going? 1 squared? It's going to 1. Yeah? n is going to infinity. Where is 1 over n plus 1 going? 0. Yeah? 1 over 1 minus 0. So where is this whole guy going? Also 1. So what do I got? 1 times 1. What is my limit? Don't forget this minus 1 times 1 minus 1. We did it. Are we done? No. Good. Right. We took the natural log of the limit. The natural log of the limit is negative 1. So what's the limit? Yeah. You got it. You're good at this now. E to the negative 1. Right? Got to eat it. Okay. E to the negative 1, which is the same as 1 over E. What were we doing? Why were we even doing this? Oh yeah, right here it is. Here's the problem. We wrote it down. We were interested. Does this converge or diverge? Right? And what were we using? We were using the ratio test. 
Yeah? What are the ratio tests? What are we looking for once we do the ratio test? Oh wait, here we go. Here was our limit. This was our, this was our, uh, what we got from doing this problem and looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of an plus one over an. This is where we kind of left off and then we had to do all of this work, right? Wow, crazy, right? Um, and we ended up with this. So what is our conclusion from the ratio test? One over e compared to one, good. E's between two and three, right? So one over e is smaller than one, right? This is our L from the ratio test. It's less than one, therefore, what, we, what can we con conclude about this guy? This guy converges, converges absolutely, right? Um, it's always positive, so absolute convergence, convergence is the exact same thing for this, right? Well, that's kind of awesome. We now know that this guy converges. What does that tell us? In addition to the fact that this converges. Back over here, right? Back over here. Since this converges, So, by the contrapositive of the divergence test, what do we know? The fact that this guy converges, we also then know that the limit, as n goes to infinity, of that expression in there, n factorial over n to the n, is zero. That's where we started out, yeah? This guy converges, therefore this limit must be zero. Well, now what else do we know, right? n to the n and n factorial both go to infinity. This was infinity over infinity, right? This infinity one, the denominator infinity. So that means this guy is faster growing than this guy as n um, gets large. So what can we now say? We just found something that grows faster than n factorial. And n factorial grew faster than exponential. And exponential has been the thing that got us into this online teaching thing in the first place. So this is kind of scary and cool all at the same time, right? Um, so what do we say? n to the n grows faster than n factorial as n goes to infinity. And we can add another guy here. And I think I might bring this guy to a close and then do a separate um, final 11.6 um, video with our ratio test proof especially because you're going to prove the root test. All right, that's good for today. I think, let me make sure there's nothing else I want to mention. All these things are super useful. Oh, there is things I want, more things I want to mention. All right, um, maybe I'll mention those things in the next little video. I think we'll bring this to a close. Then we're going to do a little more fun with factorials. That's what uh, the next little piece will be, fun with factorials and proof of the ratio test. See you soon.